has it really been eight years since we last dove into Crash Plan? Wow, time really flies. You know, online backup has changed a ton since then. New players, new features, new security concerns. It's a whole different world out there. So I figured it's about time we dust off our Crash Plan knowledge and see how it stacks up in 2024. In the past, CrashPlan had a few bugs that were really frustrating to users. For example, people had issues with user roles where new essential and professional users weren't getting the correct default permissions in their files. And that seems to be sorted now as well as other minor bugs that slightly tarnish the user experience of CrashPlan. I've now spent weeks putting CrashPlan through its paces and I'm here to give you the lowdown on what I've found. Now, in this video, we will explore its security, privacy policies and features. We'll also examine its speed and pricing. So stay tuned until the end of the video because that's where I'll be giving you my final verdict. And if crash plan is really a good plan for data crashes. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and tap the bell icon if you want more tech reviews like this one. Now, let's get the party started, shall we? Let's start off with security. CrashPlan uses industry standard 256-bit AES encryption for data at rest and TLS 1.2 encryption for data in transit. They've also thrown in multi-factor authentication and these are all pretty much industry standard features these days. Now, here's where things get a bit interesting. CrashPlan is not offering zero knowledge encryption for everyone. So what does that mean for you? Well, unless you're on the enterprise plan, CrashPlan is holding your encryption keys. Is this now a deal breaker? Well. That depends on what you need. If privacy is your top priority, you might want to look elsewhere. For example, iDrive tops our best, tops our best online backup services list and has zero knowledge encryption across all accounts. So that's also a provider that you want, might want to check out. Let's talk privacy. CrashPlan's data centers are based in Amsterdam, Dublin, Sydney, and Singapore. But most backups are stored in the US where privacy laws are a bit let's say, not as strict as those in the EU, and CrashPlan is collecting your name, your contact details, and what you do for a living. They're also gathering information about your device and your network. We all know taking data is par for the course. It's how a company uses it that we must scrutinize. CrashPlan shares your data with third parties in certain situations, like with business partners and service providers. And if you give them the green light, they'll share your data for marketing. They swear they're not selling it, but well, this level of sharing might make some users a little bit uneasy. If you're in the EU or California, you've got some privacy perks. You can ask how your data is used and for it to be removed from their servers if you shut down your account. We have articles fully explaining the EU's approach to privacy as well as California's. So I'll drop some links down in the description box below. When it comes to privacy, what does this mean for your business? Well, if you're handling highly sensitive data, CrashPlan's privacy measures might not cut it and perhaps you want to look elsewhere. Let's dive into CrashPlan's features. First things first. CrashPlan's interface is clean and pretty intuitive, and CrashPlan's got your back if you're on a Mac, Windows, or Linux. I've test-driven it all three, and let me tell you, it is easy to navigate, back up your data, and even easier to restore folders or files. Whether you're a Mac or PC user, the experience is pretty much identical. You can manage your files, adjust settings, and restore your data the same way of using either one. Now, if you're hoping to back up your phone, I've got some bad news. CrashPlan ditched their mobile apps. No iOS, no Android, nada. If you need mobile backups, you'll have to look elsewhere. iDrive is again a good option, as are services like Dagoo and BigMind all with mobile apps. Now, here's something 
a bit weird about CrashPlan. The desktop app does not work unless you are logged into your account on the web. This means no offline access to your account and no interaction with your files. A cool feature about CrashPlan though, it's not just about your computer's hard drive. You can also back up external hard drives. Got one of those? Great. You can just use it with CrashPlan very easily. If you're on a Mac or Linux, CrashPlan supports backing up to NAS devices. That's network attached storage. Basically, a super powered storage device that connects to your network. This is a big plus because many popular backup services like Backblaze don't offer this feature. But if you're on Windows, sorry, no NAS backups for you. As CrashPlan says, it's due to a system level restrictions built into Microsoft's operating system. Well, now let's talk about storage. CrashPlan offers unlimited storage on its professional and enterprise plans. Sounds impressive, right? But let's dig a little bit deeper. Unlimited might not mean what you think it means. Based on some social media posts, if you go over 30 terabytes, things start to slow down. We reached out to them and they spilled the beans. There's actually a limit on the unlimited plan. <laughs> Backup archives cannot go beyond 60 to 80 terabytes. Now, that's a lot of data, but for most users, it's gonna be more than enough. But for large companies dealing with lots of data, it's worth knowing CrashPlan isn't truly unlimited. And when you sign up for a professional enterprise plan that says unlimited, well, I'm thinking on my book that the account is not limited. This unlimited storage comes with unlimited file versioning on all of its plans. So you'll never, never have to worry about losing all the versions and you can even set how long they stick around. Pretty handy if you're prone to accidental deletions or need to track document changes. So what else is CrashPlan bringing to the table? Well, CrashPlan is constantly working in the background, backing up new and changed files every 15 minutes. CrashPlan uses something called block level file copying. In simpler terms, it only backs up the bits and pieces of a file that have changed, not the whole file each time. This means faster backups and less strain on your network. Now moving on to speed. Because let's face it, nobody likes waiting around for their files to upload and download, especially when you need to restore a whole backup, a whole operating system. Speed is of the essence. We tested CrashPlan's performance ourselves. Our setup is pretty simple. We've got a server in Ireland capped at 100 megabits per second. We upload and download a five gigabyte mix of files twice, then average it out. It gives us a real world picture of what you at home might expect at an average 100 megabit internet connection. Now, for uploads, CrashPlan has made vast improvements, but it's still not really great. Back in 2021, uploading our test files took over one hour. Now, well, we're looking now at under 20 minutes. That's an impressive and massive leap forward, but there are other services handling uploads in less than 10 minutes. Now, downloads were quicker, which uh, is a relief to be honest, coming in at about seven minutes. That's right in line with the top performance we've tested. If you're curious about how CrashPlan stacks up against other speed demons in the cloud backup world, check out our article that I've linked below so we have a handy comparison table of all the services and their speeds. Now, let's get down to pricing. CrashPlan isn't the cheapest option out there. The Essentials plan is around $3 per user um, on up to two devices. It is for personal users who need to back up small amounts of data. You get 200 gigabytes um, of backup capacity per user and you can pay $1 per month for each additional 100 gigabytes. Now, let me give you a little bit of a sidebar here. CrashPlan started very early on as an unlimited cloud backup provider for 
individual users. Unfortunately, they scaled back and canceled their individual plans completely, solely focusing on businesses and enterprises. Now, I'm happy to say that in 2024, they seem to include individual users again because I really like their software. I've played around with it a lot and it's very intuitive and the backups work great. I'm not a super fan of the um, per 100 gigabyte pricing plan because you never know like how much you're gonna end up paying eventually but it's probably the direction the company is heading into. Now, the professional plan is $88 per user per year for up to two devices. It's best for small businesses and individuals who need unlimited backup capacity. The enterprise plan is $120 per user per year on up to four devices, and you get unlimited storage capacity. I'd say this is best for organizations that need additional admin capabilities. There's also API access, so you can really uh, integrate it into your own applications, but it's, it's super advanced stuff that the average Joe, the average small business is probably never going to need. Who's crash plan really for? So I'd say based on crash plans history, it's perfect for businesses that need serious data protection and aren't too fussed about privacy trade-offs. It's really also on the, how the, the solution is marketed on a website. It's clear that crash plan still prefers businesses and larger businesses. So I'm a little bit worried that as a small customer that only wants to back up say 200 or 500 gigabytes, it's probably not the right choice because you never know how much priority will be given to your account in case there are problems arising and you need to contact support. So if you're like a massive business account with 10, 20, 50 licenses, spending two, three, four hundred dollars a month with them, they might um, contact you a little bit faster if you have a problem. And if you're, if you're juggling with tons of data that's really constantly changing, I think crash plans, nonstop backup and massive storage could be a game changer for your organization and add a lot of peace of mind uh, for, the, for, these, for these system admins and general business administration. But, and well, this is a big but, it is not for everyone. So as I said before, if you're just backing up personal photos, couple gigabytes here and there, dealing with highly sensitive information. Well, this could apply to businesses, but also to personal users as well. Um, and especially if you need mobile backups, for example, you have a photo collection on your iPhone or iPad or, or Android device, and you want your photos to automatically be backed up to the cloud. Now, CrashPlan is not gonna do that. There are other cloud storage and cloud backup providers that offer that. We have a lot of videos here on the channel, so you might want to just check them out to see if, if they're a good fit. So you really have to look elsewhere if you're looking for mobile backup and photo backup in particular. The privacy concerns and lack of mobile support could be also deal breakers for some users, but again, it really depends on your priorities. So if you're looking for alternatives, check out our full rundown of the best cloud backup services for 2024 in the description or cl clicky clickety click right up here. And that wraps up our crash plan deep dive. Um, I really hope you found it helpful. And if you did, as always, smash that like button and subscribe and hey, drop a comment. What's your top go to backup service and why? Let's chat. See you next time. Bye bye.